Hello, and thank you for joining this demonstration of Vectra's Community Threat Analysis. The Community Threat Analysis is a really important functionality in the Vectra X-Series platform that puts your key assets at the center of a real-time detection and investigation of both insider and targeted attacks. The goal is to make sure that security operations teams not only know information about threats in the network, but they can also see the proximity and the potential impact of those threats to the most key assets in the network so that you can always make informed, smart, quick decisions knowing the context of threats in their relation to your assets. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the Vectra user interface. First, we should probably uh, talk about how Vectra sees communities in the first place. The X-Series platform is going to monitor your internal network traffic to build a logical map of all the hosts in your network. Um, but the platform goes well beyond just building this basic map. It's going to use machine learning and data science to automatically build communities. Uh, it will build these communities by observing the connections between hosts that are very common and the data that passes between them. So this makes it very easy to just learn the naturally occurring communities that already exist within your networks so that you can see these interrelationships. If we look at the subcomponents of a, com a community, most hosts are going to be shown by one of these green dots. Uh, if we needed to get more information on a host, we can just click on it. Now, if we have a host that's showing a sign of an infection or an indicator of an attack, those hosts are going to be highlighted with a red triangle with an exclamation point in the center. You can see from the very beginning that this gives you a lot of uh, important context. When you see some, uh, a device that may have a, a problem or is posing a threat, you can see how it sits in relation to all the other hosts in this community. And also, you will see this Im uh, important looking uh, gold star down here at the bottom. This is a key asset, and this is important because, of course, in a community, some uh, nodes or hosts are going to be more important than others. The Vectra platform allows you to tag certain hosts as being a key asset. Um, this may be a database or a server that has really important data, but this allows you to, uh, to really quickly and easily highlight what are the important hosts out there, and it helps us always see when there's a potential detection, how close is it to that really key asset. Uh, the platform's also going to automatically be able to identify popular assets that you may want to tag uh, as well. Again, that's just going to be based on observing traffic, and that's done automatically. If we look at this uh, hollow circle um, uh, up here to the left, this is a cluster of hosts. These are a set of hosts that all sh share the same uh, connectivity pattern. So we've just condensed them and consolidated them into this uh, symbol of this hollow circle. If we wanted to expand that, we can just click on it, and now you can see all of the hosts that are connected, in this case, to a server and a star formation. Um, but this is uh, something that allows you to get a little bit more detail if you want to see that. And of course, you can consolidate this back down to the circle just by clicking on it. Now, as we look more at this community, it's important to realize that most communities aren't going to exist in perfect isolation. Uh, they talk to other communities or users in that environment are going to talk to other communities. Those connected communities are shown by this, uh, these gray dots. And the larger the circle, uh, the larger the connected community. Uh, so we can see hosts in this community now that are communicating outside to another connected community. And the size gives you some uh, really easy indication of what that community might be. And you can also label those. So. Now let's shift gears and look at a specific example of a detection. What we're going to do is now we're focused in on the finance community. And you can see that there are hosts within the finance community that are connected also out to the engineering community. And we're going to follow this particular set of hosts uh, over a period of days to watch an investigation unfold. 
you'll notice really early on that we have a host here that is showing signs of an attack. Uh, we have detections associated with this host, and if we want to get detail on it, we can just click on that host to see lots of additional information. First, we can see the host name, its IP address, but most importantly, we see the threat score and a list of the recent detections on that device. Right now, the threat score for this particular uh, host is fairly low. Um, that's because we see one type of detection, reconnaissance behavior, and it's an internal port scan. This is certainly something we would want to know about and something we would want to address, but overall the threat sc score is still relatively low because it's just showing a single behavior in the earlier phases of a more advanced or targeted attack in this reconnaissance phase. Definitely something to clean up, but also it gives us some scoring to let us know um, exactly uh, on the continuum of an advanced or an insider attack, kind of where this ranks. Now, we can watch this community over a period of uh, days, and the community is staying very stable. Um, so this is a nice predictable network, all until uh, December 3rd, when we see a new detection, a new host uh, that is now showing signs of an attack. So just like we did in the previous example, we can click on this node and see what's going on really quickly. Again, here we see um, some important information, and again, we see some reconnaissance behavior. Um, we see that internal port scan, uh, and we also see the internal uh, darknet scan. This is usually a sign that a uh, particular host is trying to map out what devices or what IP addresses uh, are being used on this network. Um, and it's a really good sign that someone's kind of mapping out trying to plan their next step. And the inter internal port scan is something that an insider may do in order to find out what services are available on a particular uh, machine that it's already found so that it knows exactly how to attack that uh, particular device. So important reconnaissance uh, uh, behavior there. So let's keep an eye on this particular host over the next few days. Um, we see that, again, things are fairly stable, but on the 6th, the uh, host that we're really uh, keeping an eye on here has connected to the key asset. And this is a really important piece of context because now we've seen that it has behaviors that it indicates it might be looking around for other targets, and now it's connected to our most key asset this is really uh, a good time that we would want to uh, respond, make sure that uh, we can clean this up and understand exactly what's going on. We're going to let this uh, keep running so that we can kind of see the uh, extension and the maturation of this attack. And on the 7th, we're starting to see this host reach out to lots of different uh, other hosts in the, in this community. And as we've seen, this is pretty unusual for this device. Again, really good t contextual information that things are somewhat out of character for this uh, host. On the 8th, this trend continues and you start to see the host communicating with other connected communities. Again, things that are very different for this particular host. If we take a look at what's going on with the infected host on the 8th, we see that the threat score has gotten considerably higher. And that's because we are seeing an extension of the attack. We've gone past the reconnaissance phase, and we're starting to see lateral movement, uh, things like a brute force attack. This could be a sign that an insider is trying to get access to other machines in the network that he doesn't normally have access to, and he's, he's trying a lot of different passwords or uh, SQL injection activity. This is a sign that maybe the uh, attacker is trying to uh, get into an internal web server or something like that. But once we've gone past the reconnaissance phase and you see this lateral movement, the threat score sh shoots uh, way up very quickly. So now we've seen a lot of progress in the attack. We've seen lots of new connections. We've seen lots of new behaviors. And on the 9th, something really substantial happens. The behavior of this 
host has changed so much and its communication pattern has changed so much that it has now joined the engineering community. It's moved from finance into engineering and this is of course a really significant change. And then it directly connects to a key asset within the engineering community and if we look at the behaviors of this host now we see exfiltration behavior in addition to the reconnaissance and lateral movement that we saw before. We see this data smuggler um, behavior where the uh, host in question is going out and gathering up lots of data uh, to ship it elsewhere. So this is um, the later phase of a very serious attack that um, could be an insider uh, who's now gained access to a key asset and is gathering up all of this data. So this is a very, very rich set of context that we have to make decisions because now we can see not only the change in the detections, how it's progressed from rec reconnaissance all the way to exfiltration, but we've also been able to see how does the behavior of this host change? Who has he been talking to that's new? How has he been moving toward those key assets in the network and communicating with hosts that are outside of its normal set of behaviors? All of this gives us a really rich picture so that we can make smart, informed decisions about an advanced attack and do so quickly. So this uh, wraps up the uh, quick introduction to the community threat analysis. We really encourage you to take a look at our other videos and resources. And of course, uh, reach out to us to sign up for a risk-free demo to see how this technology would behave and help in your actual networks. Thanks for your time, and we hope to talk to you soon.